since time immemorial, sports cars have been the ultimate dream cars. We'd hang their pictures on our walls. We'd make them our desktop wallpapers. We'd collect scale models in their likeness. I'm fairly certain that if other unimportant factors like practicality were not an issue, you'd probably be driving a sports car as well. But you probably have a family now, and your wife would rather have an SUV than a two-door sports coupe. I understand your pain. So I've compiled a list of excuses, I mean reasons, why you should own a sports car. So in this video, we'll define a sports car as something that's designed for performance or something that looks like a sports car, something that has two doors. One of the most common reasons for wanting a sports car is that they increase your poggy points. However, if you want to convince your significant other, this will not increase your chances of approval. So instead, let's start with a financial argument. Number one, sports cars depreciate really well. Obviously, prices can vary depending on whether you live in the Philippines or the US. But universally, sports cars tend to depreciate at a slower rate. For example, a 2012 GT86 here in the Philippines still sells for around 1 million pesos, while a 2012 Camry will only sell for about 400 to 500,000 pesos. A 2012 Accord will also sell for about the same price. And when they were all brand new, they all sold for about the same price. The number of doors is also usually inversely proportional to the depreciation rate. Usually, the fewer doors it has, the slower it depreciates. For example, a two-door BMW E92 3 Series will sell for about 1.5 million pesos while a 4-door 3 Series with the same engine will probably sell for less than half as much. As cars get older, the gap gets wider. Almost all 90 sports cars are now going up in value. For example, the Supra MK4, which originally sold for just $35,000, recently sold for $200,000 at an auction. And the R34 GTR are now reaching prices of over $350,000. That's pretty good ROI considering that they only sold for $45,000 when they were brand new in Japan. They say that cars are not investments, but they can be if you know what you're buying. Also, if you want to buy a 90 sports car, you better do it ASAP because Aside from becoming more expensive, they're also becoming rarer. There was a time when you could easily find 90 sports cars for sale, like the RX-7, the R32, uh, the R33. But now, if you do a search on Facebook Marketplace, um, you'll probably just find one, or not at all, because collectors are holding on to them. So yeah, the financial argument, I think, is the best excuse, I mean, the best reason for buying a sports car. Reason number two, sports cars can be safer. Emphasis on can be because it depends on your maturity as a driver, of course. I think speed has been demonized unnecessarily. There are a lot of situations where having a fast car increases safety. One thing that people should realize is that when you're going diagonally on the road, which you do when you're changing lanes, you're going slower than what your speedometer says. This is according to Pythagorean Theorem. You can tell your wife that. Okay, so let's say you're changing lanes at an angle of 35 degrees at a speed of 100 kph. To the other cars on the road, you're just going forward at a speed of 81 kph. You'll have to do 122 kph just to match the speed of traffic. If you have to overtake, you'll have to go faster. When changing lanes, you have to match the speed of traffic on that lane. Otherwise, you'd force the cars on that lane to hit the brakes, which increases the chances of collision. Having a faster car also increases safety when you have to overtake. Overtaking when driving a slow car can be a dangerous experience, especially when the car that you're trying to overtake suddenly decides to accelerate. 
if you have a faster car, you can go from being behind the car to being in front of the car in a shorter time, and therefore reducing your chances of getting hit from the front by oncoming traffic or getting hit from behind by faster traffic. Aside from being fast, sports cars are also designed to handle well at faster speeds. So if you're on the highway going at 100 kph and you suddenly have to swerve to avoid an obstacle, it's gonna be more stable. Also sports cars tend to have better brakes so they can stop faster. Also sports cars are louder, so even if they're in your blind spot and you can't see them, you will still be able to hear them, thereby increasing safety. So yeah, I think I'm doing well so far. I think these are very valid excuses, I mean reasons for owning a sports car. But we still have more reasons to go so you can thank me later. The happiness argument. If you drive a sports car, you'll have a lot of fun driving. Therefore you will be a lot less stressed. And therefore you will spend more quality time with a wifey. That's a pretty convincing argument, I think. A lot of people say that you can't enjoy sports cars in the city because you can't drive fast in the city. To that, I say acceleration is more fun than velocity. Acceleration pushes you to the back of your seat. Velocity just makes everything go by you very quickly. You don't have to drive at 200 kph to feel that adrenaline rush. Going from 0 to 60 kph in 2.5 seconds is more fun than going at a constant speed of 200 kph. And you won't be breaking any speed limits. The you drive less now argument. The sales of sports cars have increased since the pandemic started. Exotic brands like Porsche, Lamborghini, etc. are selling more cars now than they did before the pandemic. I think one reason for that is that people drive less now because most people work at home and since you drive less, you spend less on fuel, you spend less on maintenance, and you put less mileage on your car. So it costs less now to have a sports car as your main car than before the pandemic. The affordability argument. Sports cars can be very expensive. A Supra MK5 sells for 5 billion pesos. If you go for exotics like Lamborghinis, you can expect to spend around 15 million pesos per car. But not all of them are expensive. Of course, expensive is a relative term, but you can buy a GT86 or a WRX for around 2 million pesos brand new. That's not exactly cheap, but it's about the same price as a mid-range for Tuner or Montero, and you see a lot of those around. You can also buy a second-hand MR2 for around 400,000 pesos. You can buy a second-hand Eclipse for around 300,000 pesos. I think these prices are rock bottom already for these cars, and they're unlikely to get cheaper as time passes. The sports cars are not that common argument. Um, sports cars are not very common on our roads. And that is a good thing because aside from making your car more unique and more desirable, it is also less likely to be mistaken as another person's car. Fewer strangers will get in your car thinking that it's their friend's car or their grab. Also, if your car gets stolen, it's easier to spot because it's less likely to get lost in a sea of normal cars. So there you go. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have a wife or maybe parents who need convincing, feel free to share this video. And you can thank me by clicking on that like button or by subscribing.